Congratulations, Cletus and the whole team, everybody that's there doing that whole deal. If you run it down the track with one bad injector, it makes it into a freaking torch, yep. and there will be a half inch deep trough in your cylinder head and block. Mine is made to start up drag race and then drive it down the road on pump gas for a thousand miles. This is made to maximum effort, maximum horsepower possible, 30 seconds, maybe a minute at the most before you have to physically stop and cool it down. That I'm gonna show you on, oh. Mm -mm. All right, so first off, congratulations, Cletus McFarlane, on going your first five in Eagle. That was super cool. Uh, glad everything's turned out good for you there. And Mullet with the OG Big Block Chevrolet sent me a text saying that was your personal best so far in uh, Mullet on uh, 60 foot, 330 and eighth mile. Personal best on that deal. So that thing's running great. Glad you did really good. So congratulations, Cletus and the whole team, everybody that's there doing that whole deal. So let's uh, get back to here. Uh, now we're gonna be doing the full build up video on the scratch and dent, which I'm calling it, cause this is the scratch and dent engine that I sold to Garrett, scratch and dent SMX that I bought back from Garrett. And uh, so this is it and I showed you, we just got the main caps on it. This is cleaned, ready to assemble and we did not show you the lifter bushings. It has the lifter bushings in there. I mean, it's not very exciting pounding lifter bushings in and holding it to size, but that's what they end up looking like. Cylinder bores look like a million freaking bucks. I'm really super happy with those. So we're going to do a complete build-up video on this. Uh, you come back and watch that on the old Scratch and Dent SMX for Thursday, 7 p.m. And a couple things I did differently, and we're gonna go over and I'm gonna show you the heads real quick. You'll, we'll give you the whole rundown detail on uh, Thursday, but the bunch, bunch of broken springs still. And uh, we'll go over there, take a look at that just real quick. And I have decided to make this a 540 instead of 572 with a spline drive crankshaft that I'm gonna show you on, oh, mm -mm. gonna show you on Thursday, all right? Explain how that all works and what all's going on. So got everything all laid out here. Getting ready to rock and roll. Uh, this changes some of my front stuff that's gonna going on here. And uh, so that's the crankshaft. So let's go over there, check out the cylinder heads. Oh. We ran the springs, old springs. It had several broken valve springs, some questionable valves that we just replaced here. Three valves that we replaced. Only because they just, um, honestly, they had run with broken valve springs too too long. Uh, this one's, this one is broke. Uh, this one is broke. That one is really broke. Broke the outer on this one. Um, that has a spring dyno, so forget all that. No big deal. Um, so now we're putting new springs on it. Um, we'd replace the valves that were even questionable because this already had new valves in it uh, with a pretty minimal amount of time on it from, uh, from Garrett. So uh, you want us to come back on Thursday and we're going to show you the complete build on the scratch and dent Camaro engine and uh, also show you a bunch of stuff on the car kind of uh, condensing all of Kevin's videos of where the car is at because that car that drag radio car is drag and drive drag radio car is a bad mother trucker you can see here I still haven't had time to put my engine uh, back in the wagon uh, this thing is ready to rock and roll all freshened up if you forgot to go look at this we had a complete tear down on hopefully what SMX engines are supposed to look like when you tear them apart. Go back right up here. You can see that video. Make sure you go back there because you can see something that's torn apart and actually was uh, nice looking the way they're supposed to be. And uh, so anyways, make sure you come back Thursday, 7 p.m. for build up of the Scratch and Dent SMX for Bass Crown. Hey everybody, you're here at Steve Morris Engines. Today, we're hub dynoing Perry Dunn's Pro Mod Car from 
uh, Mesquite, Texas. Mesquite, Texas. What did he do? Drives this thing all the way up here with his main crew guy. I didn't even get your name yet. Desmond. Desmond. With Desmond. This is the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> all right. So anyways, uh, because this is kind of a new combination, Benny headed 526, Holly EFI just went to a Pro Charger 144, 144X blower. And uh, so we're just going to do a just the face tune, get things working, running, because it isn't even working, running, come up on a trans brake idle and doing anything yet. We're going to run across the hub dyno as much as we can, because honestly, this this actually should exceed the dyno. Oh, wow. So uh, that's what we'll be figuring out. That's one. That's one of the little little issues with it. On how uh, if it if it does make seventy pounds of boost, uh, yeah, should, should we? It's just that? gonna it'll just accelerate right through it so yeah. freaking fast. But uh, even if we even if we get it to that point to where it's accelerating super fast, it's yeah. still it'll go down track like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, and tell us more about it. I, it's a 41 Willis. Like he said, it's a Vinny headed motor. I've always been a Vinny person. I love Vinny stuff. It has 2.6 head uh, with the Lego in it with the four, you know, Fab 9 in the back. I mean, it's your simple yep. Pro Mod. Yep, simple Pro Mod. So uh, a five speed, is it a clutch? Uh, no, it's a, it's got a converter. Convert, okay, yeah. so it's a convert. With the lockup. With converter lockup. All right, so, uh, and then, so for you guys that don't know, so a, a Benny, headed hemi benny is really big in the tractor pole world he's he's probably king king wheel yeah. in the tractor pole world so all the blown you know when they got like four or five hemis on a tractor and you know it makes ten thousand freaking horsepower whatever it is um most every one of those engines is a benny deal right doesn't really matter if it's if it's a tractor if the guy makes stuff for a tractor pull or not, it still makes horsepower, still runs RPMs, does everything. Uh, so uh, Perry had bought a camshaft from me for this combination. Yep. Yep. And so we got everything up. Just going to get it started here in a second, make sure everything's all working. And uh, then we'll just start on some bass tune and try to get everything functioning, working as it's supposed to be doing. And... Uh, so he can go race, take it back down to Texas. Probably the way you guys roll, you'll probably drive it back down there. It'll be Friday when you get there and you probably test and tune that night. Uh, actually on Sunday, what the plan is. <laughs> oh, Sunday, you're gonna, you're gonna take a couple days off. I thought you guys were real Ironmen, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would, but it's supposed to be raining when we get back. Ah, it's supposed to be raining, okay. So anyways, we're gonna uh, uh, get start working on getting this tuned up. I have already been working on some tune, just trying to get startup tune going for it. Um, and we'll go from there. Number eight cylinder is dead. So, all right, we can get that closer. Figure out why that why that cylinder is dead. I'm full of out cover stuff. Still dead. So we got one dead hole. Just trying to get it started up here. So it's live now. 
right, so which means that other injector's dead. So let's take that injector back off. We gotta take that injector out and figure out what's wrong with it. Let's fire this up. You know, worked on a cranking fuel table for it. Cranks fires up now. Seems to be fine there. You didn't even give it any throttle, did you? Or did a little bit. Just look that yeah, cool. Okay. Uh didn't didn't have it had a dead cylinder. Well, it only idles on one set of injectors and then it transitions into both set of injectors after it reaches boost. So flip the injectors around to see if it was just the injector is bad and yes, lo and behold, the injector is stuck shut. So got to take it apart, check that out. Uh, one of these things that you might be interested in seeing, and I always, I wish people would uh, watch this video. Anybody that has zoomies, you need to hook up, and zoomies and EFI, you have to do your O2 sensor like this. This is the correct way of doing it. See this little itty bitty zoomy tube right here? The O2 sensor's in there. It take it has a tube that goes into there, 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 there. And it, what it does is it fills up this tube, all four, so it averages them, and then flows through here. You can't deadhead it. It needs to flow through there, right out here like that. That is the only way you can do this in a zoomy. Unless you're gonna, unless you're gonna waste your time. This has eight O2 sensors. <laughs> That that is a that is, uh, in my personal experience, that is far too much information and far too hard to tune. <laughs> it is it is so it is there's there's too much going on there. EGTs, awesome. Eight individual EGTs, average the O2 here. It does everything you need to do right there without giving you so much fine detailed information that it is you just. You get lost in the woods because of all the trees. It is really hard. So anyways, we'll uh, change this over. Oh, Nate, they're oh. here for you. Oh, dang it. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs>
the needle and seat is moving, something happened to the coil. Oh, so this is, and this is one of the things that we're we're gonna do. We'll we we'll run through and we'll test all of these right now, mm -hmm. the output. But as it's running, at after we get this idling, that was the next thing I'm gonna do is I'll make it idle on one set of injectors and see if it drops a hole. Okay. Which would mean to have a bad injector, and then flip it over and make it idle on the other set of injectors okay. to make sure everything's working. Okay. Because if you run it down the track with one bad injector, it makes it into a freaking torch. Yep. And there'll be a half inch deep trough in your cylinder head and block. It'll on um, probably won't make it to the 330 before it's burned up and gone. So we're gonna test all the injectors before we go any farther, just to make sure there's no other bad ones because uh he uh Perry does have a set of smaller injectors that we that are perfectly fine to put in there. Uh I'll just change the fueling strategy just a little bit and it's fine. Okay, that's cool. So what we did was, it's sitting here idling, and I turned off the primary set of injectors, put all the power to the secondary injectors, and it still sits there, runs, and does everything. So that's perfect. That's exactly what it's supposed to do. And then went back, and then went back again, just to make sure, so everything's all cool. All right, so we are, and I leaned up the idle just a little bit more. You heard it pick up a little bit more. Got a little bit cleaner. It looks like it's idling around 5.5, five, right around that range, which is pretty normal. EGTs are they're actually pretty hot right there at uh, uh, right around in the 700 range, okay. which is pretty hot and clean, but it still revs up. So that's cool. My general rules are here. It starts, it revs up, got to go on the brake. So that is our next thing. We need to put it up on the brake. We'll get a little bit of temperature in it. We'll start it up, let it idle again. I had to just get in the car and then put it on the freaking trans brake. Ready? Yep. Okay, no problem. All right, so what you just heard there was a big fat bag of nothing. So, because <laughs> he went to wide open throttle and it just uh, just stayed there, which just means it doesn't have any fuel right there. So, you want that EFI on, please? Go in here. Now, I also just did a data log on it, and we'll probably see it as like 18 or 19 or 20 to 1 or something like that. How many times do you want to make them get in and out of the car? Three. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Well, not as lean as I thought it was going to be, but that's still, you know, that, yeah. that's just, it's just, you know, that's dead lean. So, no problem. So, you know, when he initially tips in, it's still good. Let me get rid of a bunch of this stuff and I'll look at my AE fuel stuff. Alrighty, let's uh, try two step again. Now, the reason it dies when it comes off the trans brake is because it is freaking full of fuel when it's doing that. And it, it, it needs to be 
let off the trans brake with wide open throttle and just needs to take off. When you close the throttle, it doesn't have a chance to clear the cylinder. That's why it takes a little bit of, um, uh, it does it on a turbo car. It does it on anything you put on trans brake and don't launch it. it. Tends to do that. All right, so that sounds good. That sounds good to you? Yeah. The throttle is really responsive now. Okay. Throttle's responsive now. Our, my job is almost done. <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do here now um, is we'll I'll get the dyne wall set up and we're going to just... The, the only way I can really dyne over there is you're just going to need to shift through part throttle, just shift through gears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And we'll make sure that looks good. And after it part throttles and seems to be all happy there and at like that 4,000 RPM area, mm -hmm. then we'll come into it, burr, 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 put it in high gear and just roll into it hard, hard and fast. And okay. yeah, hang on. <laughs> Okay, sweet. So actually, it was going through the gears. Yeah. You made it in the fifth gear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's fine. About what kind of RPM were you at? The 30A, 31A. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, so you'll do that exact same thing. I'll stand over here. I'm gonna give you the nod. Yeah. Whack you, that's that's it. Now, we'll, the one thing will be, um, just be prepared. It might zip up really quick. Just be prepared. It, it's basically no different than driving it. Okay. <laughs> If it knocks the tire off of it, you lift. Right. <laughs> uh, tell me how of you you want me to go. Uh, let's just go. If it catches it and does everything the way it should, I'll just go 7, 8,000 RPM. All right, so you've seen the all the amount of running it's done. Uh, we just put it through the gears and everything. But guess what? We need to cool it down. You know how you cool these engines down? You don't run them. <laughs> so this is the big difference. I still get some people, a lot of you guys understand exactly what's going on. The difference between SMX and a Pro Mod Hemi from Pro, it doesn't matter who it's from. If it's a Pro Mod Hemi, there is no water in the engine, which means it will not cool down, which means that is the most amount of driving you're going to do on this car before you have to put fans on it, not run it, let it cool down, suck it, suck air through it, whatever your method of cooling it down is but they're only designed, this is the difference in between the SMX and a Pro-Line Hemi or anybody's Hemi, Newton Hemi, it doesn't matter whose it is, sorry. But it uh, doesn't matter who it is, very purpose-built. Mine is made to start up, drag race, and then drive it down the road on pump gas for a thousand miles. This is made to maximum effort, maximum horsepower possible, 30 -ish seconds, maybe a minute at the most before you have to physically stop and cool it down and go through your maintenance, check everything, replace whatever needs to be replaced, that kind of thing. So that's the difference in between the two. So I appreciate everybody or the people that do say, oh, it'd be great to put a SMX in a Pro Mod car. It's going to go slower, I'm just going to tell you, because part of the part of what we have to do in making this thing live for hours upon hours upon hours of continuous driving on 91, 92, 87 octane gas is we can't make it the biggest cam possible, loose terms, more compression, big camshafts. We can't make it a pro mod piece and still do a drag and drive with it. It's not possible. So just FYI. Definitely. Okay, so first hit, I'm not exactly sure how it's all gonna go. Um, I'm not worried about the engine or the tune up, but we're gonna do, it's just gonna pull through the gears get it in high gear, and then roll into it hard and let it rev up to about eight grand. Fast, it go to 8,000? 75, 78. Okay. Let me look at <laughs> let's look at that information. 
which is good. I mean, things are running fine. So here's the other deal when he, when he told me what gear ratio it has in it. Being 533, the other problem with this, and that's what I, what, it's like multiplying. Right. So the faster we spin the hubs, the more it loads. Right. So with that high gear ratio, it's not spinning the hubs very fast. Definitely. So it's like, uh, it's not putting enough load on it. But let's look at this data here and I'll, I'll throw 100% load at it from the, okay. <laughs> the moment you go. So you saw it hit like 80, 80 uh, mile an hour or so? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and I'm gonna put 100% load to it and I got a feeling it's, we'll see what it does. What yeah, I mean, that's pretty aggressive. It took, uh, yeah, half a second. Uh, we could probably at least still get a boost number. 50, about 52 pounds of boost at 7,800. Oh, wow. And it's so freaking loud, it shuts the TV off. Did you say it blew some bottle? Yeah, it blew a bottle off. It hit it the ceiling. The ceiling somewhere. Oh, it was on the ceiling? Yeah. All righty, so you saw that, that pull. So let me explain exactly what's going on. So we've had my car on, on this dyno uh, and made 4,200 horsepower. You can see this video up here, 4,200. But it's, uh, this has two things going against it. This is a eighth mile pro mod car, all right? And so this thing has a 533 gear in it, all right? My car has a 370 gear in it. Uh, this is, for the most part, instantaneous horsepower versus gradual build-up horsepower on the dyno of, you know, you're spooling a thing up and it builds up boost and it's very gradual and, and then, you know, it loads. This is whop, done. So what's going on here is a combination of the gear ratio and just the a pro mod Hemi deal um that is it accelerates so fast the dyno can't catch it and that's just the nature of this dyno that was with 100 percent load <laughs> from start to finish and that's what it does uh it's if it had more if it was spinning if it had uh like a 370 gear in it and it was spinning the the dyno faster it would be able to catch it better and if it was building up gradual and it was like loading and then doing it it would also catch it better. Now this is also because of the way we're driving it. Uh, we're looking at the data log here and they only went to 8,500 there, makes 63 pounds of boost at 8,500 RPM. It's gonna be running 9,500 RPM, 9,600 RPM all the time. See what that makes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, what we're noticing in the drive shaft curve is that it is at 85. Now, this is only because it's in high gear. Uh, you go to whack instantaneous horsepower. The dyno is trying to catch it, but er everything is so freaking, it, it just isn't, it just isn't right. It just is not the way to do it. Uh, so that thing in high gear is um, just driving through the converter. So it flashes a converter. Uh, so it's, you know, 7,000 drive shaft RPM and 8,500 uh, engine RPM. Dino wasn't quick enough to catch it. it, it, it it's, it's a total cluster cuss. All right, so after me and the dog talked about it, we figured it out, and I actually think we, we almost put Perry's uh, car back on the dyno because it's like, should have locked up the converter and started it with a locked up converter. Then it wouldn't have been slipping the converter, which was really multiplying the problem and making it just accelerate so fast and drive right through it because the, the dyno would have at least put some kind of load on it. Probably not full, but it would have put some kind of load on it. Um, so anyway, so we did almost, we almost were at it, but he had to make a trip all the way back to Texas. He was leaving right then. It was a, you know, but and we accomplished what he wanted to do, which was got started, got it running, get a base tune in it, making it safe so he can go out and make, start making passes on that thing. So we're leaving it safe, rich, and so he can just start going out and making pass, and then we'll look at it, and I'll, I can jump online and look at it for him, and uh, go from there. So, what do you think? I love it. I mean, just hardly wait to get to the track. Right. Just hardly get there. Sunday, right? 
Sunday. A week from Sunday because it's supposed to rain this weekend, unfortunately. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a week from Sunday. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I think everything is pretty good. We figured out a couple of problems, had a bad injector, had some stuff that uh, you would not want to find out on track. That is a big deal. Um, you couldn't, you know, so it's, uh, that would actually be really bad. I mean, somebody went out and tried to make a pass and had one injector that wasn't working, and you didn't know it. That's why you need to know it. You need to make sure. Um, so as you saw, you know, how I turned one set of injectors off and turned the other set on, need to have EGTs on a, on a motor like this or a motor like mine uh, so you can see, make sure all the injectors are working. You go make a pass and the injectors aren't working, you're effed <laughs> fast. Um, so anyways, rock and roll. I think we're all done there. Yep. Uh, yeah, we're going to start taking this thing off the dyno. So remember, like, subscribe. Uh, probably I'm just going to be straight up front, up front with you. I really can't dyno this kind of car. I can get it. To, I can get it to this point. I can get it to this point where it starts, runs, dries. Uh, you know, comes up and trans brake does everything. I'm still gonna finish stuff at the racetrack for you. So, tis what it is. But we could do a turbo car. That's not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm Steve Morris. Have a great day.